fourth game here. And gentlemen, at the beginning of the day, I called you experts. I'm beginning to <laughs> read we the word. Oh, yeah. To your defense, you, you denied it. But I'm starting to rethink that title after not a single one of you suggested Fervor Rumble as the key to victory here for ADP. Also, we That's didn't know that Rock is. was going to troll because they would <laughs> pick what worked twice in a row. And they're like, actually, we're going to give it to you now. And now ADG figured out that actually Do having you mean a, the Fervor Rumble? Or? No, I mean oh. the Aurelian Soul Caitlyn ah. that works wonders. And they say, oh, here, have the winning composition. And now they learn. Now and you know, know, we give a lot of credit to EDG's coaching staff in big games. However, this was the fifth time in a row that Caitlyn was on the board. H2K played it twice against them. All of a sudden, you know, Rox has played it twice against them. This champion is just so safe that you can't win a laning phase against it. They've only just decided to pick it away. Yeah, but here's the thing, Deficio. Yes. Aurelian Soul was available for Rox to take yes. at any point during this champ select. It was last picked by EDG. So what's going on there? Okay, so Dash, um, we are experts here, obviously. <laughs> we, we look at the pick and ban phase, and we've now seen uh, three games in a row where a team decided to pick Rise blind and then say, take Aurelian Soul, please. It's good against the Rise. You can roam out of the lane against the Rise as well. You can pressure the entire map. Now, it happened for the third time, so uh, I feel like we need to understand that Rise is the better blind pick and definitely not the champion who won three games in a row and had insane <laughs> impact in every side lane. Uh, please pick a red well, solo bandit. The other problem is that you actually pick no wave clear because you have Jin and Rai. So who's going to actually and Fiora, stand man. Where's the wave clear? Uh, well, who's going to stand up to Aurelian Soul Caitlyn with the traps? You just can't even defend a wave. And that's when we saw with the Baron power play from EDG. They just push this lane. Thank you for the inhib. This lane. Thank you for the inhib. What can they do? And you can see that the confusion was even in pick ban phase because they were obviously like, this is Aurelian Soul. We're going to lock in Zed. Mako, get ready to hop a <laughs> Zed. And then it's like, Rise, uh, do you want Zed still into that matchup? Like, not really. All right, so uh. but now let's get into the actual gameplay elements of it because, hey, the comps fell the way they did. And I think a lot of people would still look at these champions for Rock Tiger and say, well, okay, I mean, Fiora, Smeb Fiora, I've got a lot of confidence in the way that he plays. But our first one here coming 14 minutes into the game, four for two for EDG here in the bot lane. Yeah, and this is just what Aurelian Soul does because comes down, zones the turret, lands CC, and has mass amounts of damage. And you see that Rox is actually going to decide to fight this one, and it all goes pear-shaped. Yeah, actually looked kind of scary at first. Uh, with the chase come back, Mako even goes down, but then turn around, Aurelian Soul ulti with Rumble ulti on top of it. Everyone drops low, and now you can actually start chasing. Coral picks up a few kills here, and even in the end, despite Smith getting that one kill, it doesn't really matter because that's just another kill onto death on the Caitlyn. And when you get kills on Kate early, you can you remove her weakness, which is the mid game, because you just get her so quickly to two items, and she can start being extremely impactful again. And it's also in an extended fight like that where Aurelian Shoal really shines. He doesn't really have that much DPS, but when the fight goes on for 20, 30 seconds, those orbs are going to rack up a lot of DPS and actually maul down a lot of people. And that's exactly what happens in every single one of them. And I still feel like Rox allowed EDG to play themselves into this game because that's not a clean team fight. I mean, if the comps are a little bit closer in team fighting prowess, that is much harder to win. And you saw that the communication still wasn't there. They're chasing Peanut and Scout is running in circles around the rest of his team. Like, can someone please get the damn Fiora off me. And finally, they do turn around. So I still yeah. think that like this was a good start for EDG, but you can see, still see some kinks. There were, of course, a few like issues here and there, but I actually think EDG, once they got the advantage, played it really well. Yeah. They didn't give EDG, uh, RNG, sorry, they didn't give Rock Tigers many ways back into the game. Uh, Fiora obviously was a bit of a risky pick. Uh, I understand it as a pick against the Rumble to try and snowball against him in a side lane. But it's more to me the Aurelian Soul. Like, that is just the key pick here. <laughs> Stop picking And this is just a little bait from Kuro baiting Smeb, but surprise, here's Johnny, because Olaf is about to come in and just wreck his day. It's a five-man rotation to the top side, because Aurelian Soul can come in. And this place in the net EDG, a nice little advantage to a top lane turret. And once they get the two outer turrets, they, the map is theirs. And there's a criticism uh, we didn't think we were going to use today about the Rocks Tigers, because they were winning so hard in the first two games. When they do fall behind, they tend to try and fight their way back into the game. Like, you see here, they went very aggressive despite getting ganged actually on top side. See if they can outplay the situation. Sadly for them, it ends up uh, costing them more kills, basically, because then they stay around also, and fighting their way back against roaming champions is not going to work. Well, and this is where, in all seriousness, I do love your point about Aurelian Soul and the priority that should be placed on this champion in this series, because that pick dictates for EDG the way that they must play the game. Right, And so with that champion, that's when you see them motivated to make plays like that, actually going to the side lanes. And one of the oldest criticisms of Clearlove is he needs a jungler on his team. 
because he likes to farm. Even on Team WE, you know, they used to talk about Messiah's Twisted Fate, Messiah's Scion, and he was a very farm-heavy jungler. Used to play things like Zed. Now, all of a sudden, you know, Pawns always played Twist of Fate. Scout is a heavy roamer. None of these plays in the side lanes were actually set up by the jungler. All of them were set up by the mid laner, <laughs> or in the end, like even a Karma getting up there first and setting up the play. Yeah, and it just becomes this game where whenever, like being at a Twisted Fate or Radiant really Soul, maybe a Pantheon mid, whatever it is, you know, whenever they leave the mid lane, it just stops you from playing aggressive in side lanes. Even if they don't go to your lane, you have to respect the fact they're out of vision. They could show up in a few seconds. And that's again where that pick offers so much value. You see mid laners, they just walk out of the mid lane when the wave is dead and just sit in the bush and wait a little bit. And maybe they go to side lane, maybe they go back to mid, but it's again, it's the pressure. And we saw the difficulty for Rocks in terms of having a team fight or being able to operate in team fights or, uh, through that mid game against a 5 1 and 5. Caitlin, let's go ahead and take a look at the ace that busted the game open here for EDG. Just, brought to you by we Acer. Finally, wanted EDG to start the Baron. They do so. And while Scout gets kind of cut out, he does have a GA. Peanut goes for a very greedy kick. He had a better one in hand, but they're able to play the fight. And notice Koro's ultimate right here. He's inside the pit, but he's going to lay down a very nice equalizer with his flame. Spitter on that's gonna zone out rocks and kill the rest. And what it does is it guarantees praise flash and also separates the fight into a three and a two. So even though scouts fallen down, odds are still in uh, EDG's favor. And this is what I actually like about a team like EDG. They don't give you 50 50 smart situations. Once they have that lead, Death's gonna go over the wall. He's gonna challenge Peanut and comes up with a heads up play. Yeah, we get to see EDG pure team fighting comp versus a 1 3 1 split pushing comp. EDG actually before this, they kept kind of playing side lanes, got caught out a few times. They learned just start the Baron, take the fight. Death obviously became the big carry in that one. Hey, he was actually kicked back right next to, to Koro, who just had used his abilities on something else and couldn't actually lock him down. Death stays alive, wins the fight obviously for his team. All right, well, here we go. Game three in the books for EDG. So that brings us to two and one, but they still got to put together two victories. And, and, and you already mentioned it, Spawn, in this segment, that this game wasn't devoid of mistakes for this team. So how do they clean it up even more? And particularly, sin, or particular, particularly since they're moving back to blue side here, how does Champs like go for EDG? I think one more time you have to go aggressive in the bottom lane. I'm actually looking for them to pick up the Zyra, get the aggressive bottom lane, because it unlocks the rest of the map. All right, any thoughts over here, Deficio? Uh Yeah, I think uh, first picking Zyra definitely is an option. I wonder if first picking Aurelian Soul, and now I keep <laughs> talking about it, is also an option because I'm actually waiting for one of these teams to just pick it super early in the draft and not wait for the Rise pick first, unless they only want to have it against Rise. Uh, obviously, Malzar can be a pick against it, but you can still roam on him, you can still impact the map. And it was so huge for EDG in this game. See, I think while the soul is really important, that we're overlooking the Caitlyn and just not just her laning prowess, but her ability to just dictate the team yeah. fights later on. It's very difficult for her to actually get collapsed on with the lack of the heavy engaged junglers. Lee Sin trying to get into the Caitlyn is not an easy thing to do, especially when you have to deal with Karma or Zyre that are just offering so much appeal. So I do think that the first pick Caitlyn from these teams, as we saw in game one, is yep. what I, they should be prioritizing. EDG clawing their way back into it. We'll see if they can bring us to five games. Don't go anywhere because Worlds. 2016 continues in just three and a half minutes. Yara's missing. Walks into the camp. Actually gets away from the skill shot, but doesn't really matter. Smites for a bit of healing. Trying to run out. One more hit will do it. And that's first blood. But the kickback doesn't land the root. Now Mako can run out of health. Voice of Light plus equal. It's getting a little bit more. Gorilla running down, but no. He eats a trap. Can they find any more? A Realm Warp doesn't quite get him out. One more shot will do it. They switch back into Kuro. They get one. Now how's the train kill going to work? Get back in a crit. And Death gets it. Now the battle versus Gorilla. Flash the That's a lot of damage on the Caitlyn and Equalizer. Kind of splits up the team. Koro buying what time he came with the Zonius, but still goes down to the um, plans. Yeah. Meanwhile, Death and it's Clear Love picking up everybody. It's on for the comeback for Edward Gaming. They drop the first two, but convincingly, they take game 